Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm doing my monthly buy in the account. Looking at three ETFs here, we got Amzi. They have been killing it since January. They're up 28%. Then we got Phoebe. I also want to add some more to this one, although I am pretty concentrated in it currently. And then I'm also looking at YMAX. You know, YMAX is up 14% since January. So let's take a look at all these. I'm going to figure out which one is the best in this case scenario here. Looking to get, you know, around 40 shares this month. All right, so here we got Phoebe. This one has been doing really, really good for me. Last distribution, 54.8%. As you can see, you know, three months previously, I bought this around in December. But they had three good months worth of dividends here. $1.17, $1.17, $1.17, and then going down to $0.89 cents last month. So, as you guys know, I do own the stock as well, Meta. I got this one when it was dipping back in 2022 right here. You know, I was scooping up shares at the 110s even. Not going to lie, at 90, I was getting a little bit worried. People said TikTok was going to absolutely destroy Meta. But people are clearly wrong. Meta is doing really, really good. Their market cap now is $1.2 trillion. They are paying a dividend themselves. But here, let's take a look at what the analysts got to say. So, looks like for this current year, they're going to grow their revenues by 8.9%. I believe that's going to be a little bit higher. Maybe 10 to 12%, and that's really good. Because, as we all know, Apple's latest earnings, the revenues actually declined. And we're seeing tons of companies nowadays with declining revenues. Next year, it looks like it's going to get a little bit better at 12.8%. Let's take a look at their forward PE here. Forward PE is 23.98, so a little bit above the S&P average. Enterprise value is below market cap. That's what we like to see. That shows that they have more cash than debt. Peg ratio is also looking pretty good. Enterprise to EBITDA is 17.65, so... It is looking very cheap. I also I, I, I like that measure actually because it's earnings before interest, taxes, uh, depreciation, and amortization. So it, it, it really shows how well this business is really doing. One bad thing I could say is, you know, they already have been up 98% in one year. In my opinion, this is because people are flooding to the mega caps in a high interest rate environment like this. The mega caps are going to be dominant. You do not want to be in small caps right now. But when those rates come down, you know, maybe it, it will be time to cycle into small caps. I own a couple small caps. And let me tell you, right now, they are getting beaten up. But right now, Meta looks pretty solid. All right, now we got Amazon. You know, I always wanted to be invested in this stock. Amazon is just a beast. I feel like in this period, this period, Amazon was investing heavily in their business. So right here, I, I feel like AWS was really carrying uh, the business in terms of profit. Let's take a look at what the analysts have to say here. Okay, so analysts current year is 2% revenue growth. I think they can beat that considering Walmart rep reported their earnings today and their growth at least for their online growth, was really good. Next year, 11%, so that's about what Meta is at too. Not bad. Now we check the forward PE here. So it does look like their enterprise value is higher. So that means they have more debt than cash. So total cash, $85 billion. Total debt, $106 billion. Operating cash flow does look pretty good at $99 billion. Market cap, $1.9 trillion, so that means their operating cash flow is yielding about 5% right now. Now, if we look, they do not pay a dividend. Forward PE at 40. Okay, so that is a little bit high, but I think Amazon is a pretty capital-intensive business model as they, they got to buy a bunch of warehouses or lease them. And they also got to buy a bunch of trucks and stuff. So if we look at the EBITDA, Earnings before depreciation and interest, 
it actually is looking pretty in line there at 19.87. So there is a couple accounting stuff that is bringing that net income down. As we can see, the Ford PE is 40.65. So that's well above the S&P average. But at the end of the day, we got to think, does Amazon command a premium? I think it does because they're in so many different sectors of the economy so if we look at amzi they are now yielding 50 percent, a little bit less than phoebe here and their their dividend or distribution looks like it has been growing pretty nicely here so amzi i think is looking pretty good and i always wanted to be invested in amazon but the valuation never looked right to me but now i think looking at this free cash flow how it's just exploding now. They're coming out of a big investment cycle. Now they're showing their free cash flow. I think there's good times, really good times for Amazon to come. All right, now back to the spreadsheet. I've been tracking most of the, you know, caps and premium collected all the way since February. So I got some good information and I feel like this data just becomes more and more valuable as time goes on. So I wanted to take, okay, so what's the average of their trades? So Phoebe, when they're doing their covered calls, their average cap that we can gain per week is 3.45%. So that is beating AMZ there as their average cap is usually about 2.08%. Lately, I've been noticing AMZ strikes have been super close here. As you can see uh, with last week, Amazon started at 187. The average strike price was 188.07. So it only gave us 0.31% room to run. So obviously Phoebe is winning in that mark. But what's the average yield collected on those premiums collected? Well, Phoebe, their average is 0.83%. And AMZ is actually beating that by about three basis points there. So this, you know, looking at this, I was thinking, okay, maybe I want to get into Phoebe more because say phoebe gets a big dip meta stock dips at least phoebe is giving us some room to recover but then i was looking at amazon and i was like when does amazon ever really go down they don't really need to put that cap further out and they're also collecting a little bit more premium so i took that into mind and then i made a decision but before i made that decision i had to look at ymax because ymax as uh, if you guys are subscribed, you guys notice I've been tracking the dividend and the dilution keeps on getting less worse every single month. So this one is pretty nice because it yeah, it rebalances its winners and losers every single month. And if Yield Max comes out with a new ETF, it automatically gets added into this. So since Ybit just came out, it'll be at, added to that eventually. And they have a lot of interesting etfs coming out very very soon they have tons of new etfs filed so i, I kind of think of this as you know the smp of the high yield funds it's it's pretty great so i had to keep that in mind before i was thinking about which etf i should buy with this month's money so what i ultimately decided to end up doing was buy amzi so this is my first time being in amzi Start off with 40 shares. Average price, I could have got a better average price, but I bought earlier in the day about 10 o'clock. So my average price is 23.16. Now, why didn't I buy more Phoebe or any other of those yield max ETFs? I think this one is pretty promising. The reason why I didn't buy more Phoebe is because I'm already super concentrated into meta and Phoebe so this adds a little bit more diversification to my portfolio also I've been seeing Amzi has actually been collecting more premium throughout the last few weeks so if they can keep that up I think I made the right decision with this one let me know if you guys own any Amzi or even Amazon stock I'm curious to know and yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.